Ah, fresh paper in my dot matrix printer. Let's print something from my phone. Wait, did they, did they remove the printer port from phones? Uh, no, Clem, I don't think there ever was a printer port on phones. They removed the headphone jack. That is what they removed. What do you mean headphone jack? How would I print with a headphone jack? Anyway, in this video, we are going to add a printer port to a phone. And cue the intro. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and I have recently encountered that smartphones seem to not have a parallel printer port anymore. Or maybe they never had, I don't know. Anyway, I want to use my dot matrix printer that I recently acquired for quite uh, the low price uh, with modern tech. So basically we were building a USB-C to parallel port uh, adapter thingy that is freely programmable so we can use it with any parallel port device if we write the driver for it basically. So let's get started. So why would I do that anyway? A lot of old devices like dot matrix printers still have used today and parallel port is an interface that is used in industrial and commercial settings for various devices. I especially like CNC routers and printers that work with it. But on modern devices you usually don't have a printer port anymore. Sure, you can add it with an insert card to desktop computers, but for laptops or let's say phones, your only option is USB-C. So I make an adapter that basically works on any device to allow me to operate any parallel port device, if I would write the driver for it, that is. So we start with dot matrix printers and those usually apply to the uh, Centronics standard and that is pretty easy to implement on an Arduino. So our first task is to see if we can talk to this thing with an Arduino. Of course, research is the first step. So I looked up how the Centronics protocol works and maybe somebody has already connected that to an Arduino. And of course, somebody has. In 2011, sadly, uh, the forum seems to have undergone an update, so I don't know the name of the original creator. Uh, I have linked it down below. If you happen to know the person or if you are the person, please contact us so we can credit you because that work is incredible. Basically, I took that sketch, made a custom PCB. Uh, I call it the printer shield because it basically that is what it does. It connects a printer port on a shield to an Arduino Uno. And now we can try to talk to dot matrix printer via Arduino and try out basically the sketch and see if this thing works and if it understands the logic levels coming from an Arduino. So this printer shield worked pretty good. Uh, I've made a revision on the show notes where you can download all the files and code and stuff and see where you can get this. I've made already a revision that puts the port slightly to a different position so it's easier to mount. Uh, yeah, but that worked. One thing that I still need to have to find out is, will it also work on 3.3 volt logic levels? The specs of the Centronics port tell me it should, but how does that Centronics port basically work? One thing that I really, really like about parallel ports is that they, they have a direct connection to the processor, sometimes with a buffer in between, but basically that is the actual bus that the processor writes to. So if you would have like a C80 processor, you would have a parallel bus on there. If you have a modern Intel Xeon processor, you have a bus on there that is accessible via parallel, basically. Uh, yeah, and that is what parallel ports back in the day did. So you write a specific driver that puts on data on this bus, and whenever it gets addressed and activated, then it transmit that, transmits that data to the printer or the printer can read it and know what it should print. So how does it work? It's basically an eight bit wide data bus. So you have zeros and ones for eight bits of data. You have a strobe pin, a busy flag and an acknowledge pin. That's all. And a ground connection, of course. Uh, but all that it does, it's, it waits for the time when it's allowed to read the data. Then it reads all the bits at once in parallel. Uh, and then it does the thing and it signals, I have read that, please send the next one. 
So the busy flag is basically, hey, I'm the printer, I still have stuff to do. And when the busy flag is removed, then the computer knows, okay, I can send the next bit. And that is what any computer over parallel port basically does. And we emulate that via Arduino. Speaking of the specs of that, usually, uh, you know, RS232, the serial uh, plug, that usually worked uh, on a 12 volt level stuff. Parallel ports are usually dependent on whatever voltage levels the processor uses, but sometimes they have buffers in between. Uh, and from the specs, judging from the specs, the normal Centronics protocol should be tolerant to 5 volt and 3.3 volt logic levels, just because of the little fact that at 2.2 volt, it should trigger to high and at 0.8 volt, it should trigger to low. And that would apply for both voltage levels. So there shouldn't be any problems with it, at least I hope. So let's port over this project from an Arduino with a shield to a dedicated PCB with a different microcontroller, USB-C, the parallel port, uh, and make it as small as possible because it's, it's meant for a phone, so it should be small and portable. Welcome to my computer and KiCad. We are designing some custom hardware for our project. And my first iteration was basically an Arduino Uno. And I put a little shield on top that I made that just has this parallel port on it. And now we're transferring basically that functionality over to a custom board to make it smaller and maybe more capable and also use BC. Thanks to Eisler for the PCB for this project. I got it back from them, I soldered it up assembled it and I tried to program it and it it didn't work yeah I pretty much have made uh, like an error I've warned you before um, refer to my PCB uh, design videos where I explained that you should not like just send it look it over sleep over it look at it again and then you may encounter some errors and can correct them before they get produced. So what I did, basically I used a switch symbol in KiCad that I usually don't use. I thought it looked nice. And I matched that with a footprint of a switch that I have, but the pin numbering on these don't really correspond to each other. So the switch doesn't connect the pins it is supposed to connect. And that also translated in routing when I put the pull-up resistors on the wrong side of the switch. Uh, yeah, so basically the, the, the device is kept in reset all the time. Uh, my quick fix for that was to uh, reattach the buttons in a diagonal way and add some ground lines. That didn't work because the pull-up resistors are on the wrong side. <laughs> didn't think about that. So in the end, I replaced it with just two uh, little uh, wires. That's it, wires. They are a bit springy and that basically is a switch. So it's good enough for me to program them. And when I got the code on there, I basically can snip them off and don't need them anymore and can just put it in a case. Uh, but before I would get those out to the masses, I would basically redesign it to uh, remove that flaw. I think I will do that. Yeah, I will do that if I think of it before this video is finished. Probably not. Hi, I'm Derek, and this is DC to Daylight, where we explore the world of electronics in the realm of DC, audio frequencies, RF, and into the visible spectrum of light. Here we take electrical engineering topics out of the boring old textbook and bring them into life through demonstration and test. Sometimes we even build stuff. And if there's a way to test the concept at hand, we'll put it on a scope and measure it. And in doing so, hopefully bring it to daylight. So if that sounds like a good time to you, come hang out with me every couple weeks here at Element 14 Presents. All right, see you there. Welcome back to my computer. We're now in the Arduino IDE and we look at the code. How do you send data from the phone to the device anyway? So I use an app called USB Serial Terminal, but you can use any app that does a serial terminal on your phone, wherever you can download that. 
uh, mostly Play Store and stuff. What you want to do is have an app that is settable for baud rate, control and line feed signals that it adds to the message, and you need to have it settable for the driver that it uses. Uh, USB devices need a specific driver. Uh, maybe you have encountered the issue when you use knockoff Arduinos that on Windows machines they don't want to talk to the machine because they use a Chinese chip called the CH340 and you have to install a driver for that to be able to communicate. Well, my device uses the CDC driver that is already included in pretty much any Linux distribution and I think in Mac maybe you have to install it on Windows but basically my phone is based on Android and Android is a Linux derivative, so the CDC driver is already included. If you can select that, it should work. Uh, also, if you just use the standard native driver, mostly CDC already uh, communicates with that fine. So I set my USB serial terminal to 11.5200 baud. I used 9600 for testing, but 11.5200 is faster and it works fine. No carriage return, no line feed, because when I had that activated, it basically doubles up all the carriage returns and line feeds that I actively want the machine to do. So I get uneven spacing or carriage returns where I don't want them to occur. And I make sure that I have uh, set the driver to CDC. Then it should recognize the device and basically I can talk over it to my serial terminal. For practical use on your phone, you would basically need an app that sends whatever text you want to print via the CDC port just as a text message over the serial terminal. I'm not an app programmer, but maybe you have the knowledge and skills to make like a little proof of concept app for that. Go for it. You have my endorsement. Because I want to actually use this thing and have it like a practical little unit, I had to design a sturdy case. As you've seen, it's designed to be held in place just by the PCB components itself. So the screws that you use to screw in the printer port or the, the plug into the port, those also hold the PCB in place. So you don't have to add any screws. And I 3D printed that design in ASA, which is like ABS, but a bit easier to print, but still very sturdy. I had to make a few iterations of that. First, I made one that has the overall size then I have reduced the size to make it fit snugly. I've also adjusted the hole for the USB-C port to make sure it is at the exact right position. And then I have added in the screw posts for my uh, device. So it basically screws in there and keeps them in place without any additional screws. Uh, yeah, but ASA did not prove to be sturdy enough. Also, I think while black looks nice, I want to see the inside. I want to like show off that this is homemade and not store-bought. Because it pretty much looks like a store-bought thing now. So I've made this a resin print of the same design in Mamex Engineering Resin to make it really strong. And I've mounted my device in it. And now you can see it uh, through from the back. And I have basically sanded all the edges to give it a frosted look. And that looks quite nice. And also, it's super sturdy and <laughs> not even a stretch. Uh, yeah, let's try it out and see how we can print from a phone. In this video we have created our own custom hardware that speaks USB-C and also parallel printer port. So we can use those old dot matrix printers and basically any other parallel port device on modern tech like phones and computers and stuff if we would write the specific driver for each device. Now it's compatible with Centronics printers 
It basically has Wi-Fi on board, so we can take this project much further. It needs a bit of adjustment, but it already feels as solid as a commercial product. And I really like that. If you want to make your own version, we have all the code and CAD and files on the Element 14 community, and you can download it there for free. I gotta go. There's another project waiting for me.